Robertson here, Big Water Fishing. You guys probably already know that, but here's our enclosed trailer build kind of final walkthrough. We're gonna take you through a lot of the steps. If you wanna see more in detail on those individual things, check out each one of those videos. We've got, I think, a five part series or something like that. The first you can see right here is the trailer door. So one thing I did on this is I upgraded when I ordered this trailer to marine grade plywood. Um, a lot of different options and things you could do, but I've learned through a few different trailer builds and helping buddies on different trailers that I definitely wanted to have marine grade on this and that I wanted to have these kind of slicks on the outside and then have these grippers on the inside. Makes it a lot better so you don't have to hit the thing just right, you know, using four wheelers, snowmobiles, whatever it may be on these ramps, make sure you get traction and also enough that the water can run out. And as we kind of walk up there, you look and you see all the lights. And this is a big deal that I've learned from the other ones and kind of a couple different things going on here. We've got these inside lights that are tied into our backup lights. So really simply, when we go in reverse in our vehicle, these come on, super wide floods, really gonna open that up. So when I'm backing up in an area, I can really see what the heck I'm doing. And then these outside lights here, we've got a little switch that we installed through. So outside I can get those. And that's nice because here we've got center right down, but then also out to the side. A lot of you guys, you know, you back your machines out or you're getting prepped or whatever and you can't see them. And really the key thing with this is on the separate battery, a separate switch and everything, because I want to have this switch here. So when I'm outside or when I come back to the trailer, I can turn that on without having to get all the way up to the front of the trailer. So that kind of helps out quite a bit. So those three outside lights that we showed you are going to run off this Dakota lithium battery right here. And we've got, this is a separate deal. This is for our inside lights. So we can turn those lights off right there on the inside, totally separate. So you can imagine if you know you're done with the trailer, you're gonna lock the door, you don't have to go all the way up and back. It just makes it a lot easier or inversely when you're coming back and everything's dark. So this is just running just outside. Now we're charging this battery. If you didn't catch the part with the solar panel, this is really kind of neat because we have a solar panel work through there on the, on the surface of the trailer. It's gonna charge this while we're sitting, not using it. So all you guys that have this trailer parked in your buddy's yard or on the side of the house or something, you don't have to worry about putting a trickle charge on. And even while we're using it, this battery's big enough. We got a Dakota lithium, with, we got a 46 and a 54 that we'll show you in a second there that's gonna make that really nice. If we're not gonna run out of power even during the season, I probably won't have to use that because these pull so little power. Now, the first thing you probably kind of see when you walk in here is the floor. And again, a whole thing within this, we chose a floor uh, starting first off with actually an aluminum floor. So all you guys that have a uh, wood floor, you know how that is, drilling into that, the water, the rotting and that. So it was a little bit of an upcharge or really a lot of an upcharge, but that aluminum floor is gonna make sure we have a lot more life in the trailer. But going over the top of it, we had to do something because it's just really slick, you know, for whether it's ice fishing or machines, we need some kind of protective thing in there. But so we choose these panels that are basically made for snowmobile trailers, um, you know, all kinds of different stuff. A lot of the snowmobile rider guys like these and they have the thermal expansion joint. So you can watch our floor part on that. You can get more into detail. But only thing I would tell you on this is I probably would go with a solid color. It made a lot more cuts. It made a lot more work. Uh, I am getting some remnants here and I thought it'd be kind of neat to lighten it up. Uh, but probably would stick with one color if I was telling you to do that again. And over on the side, we've got the aluminum uh, airline track, some of the guys call it. We had to put a little shim in there so that this could get up. We through bolted that. We've got big backer panels and things under there. Again, all these things you can see in more detail in the individual videos. We went with a kickboard here that we cut off sheets and went extra high with that. The one thing I see is some of those low ones, you know, it uh, just doesn't last. You can see this thing's already taken kind of a beating and while it may not be cosmetically pleasing, you can take a hair dryer to that or even just a little scuff pad and come right off. But this was a really economical version of uh, doing a kickboard and it's gonna be a lot longer lasting than diamond plate or anything else like that. We also just took the time here to put a little bead of uh, you know, caulk down the top of that because again, moisture on these things, it is gonna happen. And then moving right up to the walls, we put 5 eighths plywood on this. We wanted something enough that we could screw into and like hold this battery, not have an issue, have mounting surfaces anywhere. But then in a previous trailer, I had done this FRP and it's kind of a pain to deal with, but super durable, uh, just, wears like iron and then you don't have to worry about water issues or anything like that. So, and it also really lightens up the trailer. That's really a big deal too. So a step that's expensive and kind of a pain, but super worth it. I would recommend that in just about anything. And then you start seeing some of our kind of trailers stuff here. We've got, I guess I should note too, we ordered this one. This is actually a car hauler trailer and it's got a little beaver tail. So that made things why we wanted to go also a little bit higher on our, on our kickboard. 
done this on a bunch of boats. These are just rails off of a Ranger boat. Really nice way of storing your, your straps. Obviously, there's a lot of things you do. You can buy stuff just for that, but I had this laying around, so we said, why would we not use that? Uh, another thing that I would highly recommend with the lights, and again, you'll see these throughout the trailer. We got to pile of these up here. We actually went around with a little Dakota lithium battery and kind of just hooked them up so we could see, you know, we offset these. So it, how, much, how the light was going to be before we drilled these and mounted all of these in. And really it's, it's a good deal to get all of your wiring up. A lot of these trailers got the wiring down in the wall. And I knew if there was an issue, that's just not something we wanted to do or in case we hit something or a pinch or whatever it may be. So all of our wiring is right behind the trim here. So we can easily access that rather we need to check it, redo it or whatever it would be. Um, because behind these walls, one inch of insulation. So there's pretty much no void, which is also gonna make it more durable if it gets kind of hit from the outside as well. See, so we've got my little skull holder here. I found that the cheap helmet holders are a bad deal. Nice way of not taking up all of your cabinet space, keeping those helmets from getting beat around and also help them dry out a little bit, so. So here's the entrance point of our solar panel coming in, going back to the rear one. You can notice I've got hooks everywhere. One thing I kind of learned is go with some heavy duty ones like these stainless steel can hold a lot more weight. But I put these little hooks everywhere. You know, you look over here, whether it's clothes, things drying off, or just in the off season, because the reality is most of us are not using these trailers as much as we are trying to use them. So we've got all kinds of accessories and things over there. And you notice that we've got this aluminum track all the way down, pretty much everywhere here. So we can tie these machines down anywhere, or if you're moving a fridge for mom, because yes, we literally did that. We've got the shovel holders over here. We've got another helmet holder because Again, kind of space these things out. When we start fishing, we're probably going to have two machines and shacks in here. So we're kind of spacing our stuff out, make sure we got enough room. The big thing is, you know, if you're going to purchase a trailer, you probably need bigger than you think, especially with the width of all of these machines and shacks, everything kind of just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So when you go to the, the front, I guess the first thing you kind of see here is this big deal. This was kind of a little bit of a splurge because it was a little pricey, but I've noticed from the past that it's really nice to have not only kind of a workstation, but a place to put all of your aerosol stuff. I mean, I carry everything with me. It's just like a mobile office. We've got a little mixing cup in there. We've got the koozie to keep from busting up. Extra, uh, you know, what do we got? Coolant here. Uh, all my sprays, grease gun, all that good stuff. And we've got a little spot to work on them here. And it's kind of nice, this deal. We've got some paper towel holders and all that stuff. Got us a little Rappel tool holder. Really kind of a neat deal. And here's our second panel that's going up. So we've got a separate battery. We'll show you here in a second. But this is uh, a separate panel that's on the roof outside. But when you look kind of down here, you notice I, I, I'm not saying this is fancy, but we use a little bit of PVC pipe to hide all these wires. So basically what I've got here is a switch that will allow me to run off the truck when it's plugged in and running or off the battery here that we've got with all of the lights and things. And then we've got a shut off switch too, so we can kill this. We won't have any draw or anything like that or in the off season, no accidents. Um, we've got a little electrical box and we'll show you a little cutaway there where we've got our, our hookup because Basically, you need to get power in this trailer all the time, whether you want to charge something, you're at a hotel or whatever it may be, but we want to keep this locked up and not be able to, you know, have a cord jammed in the door and having water or whatever getting in or somebody stealing it. So that little through uh, junction there in this box is kind of nice. Again, we've got another couple tool holders, always have those things. You always need those. Then we've got our battery here, and this is going to run these lights that we currently have on in the trailer. And then we did... You know, obviously we got a spare tire right in front of here. We mounted this to the wall nice and firm, get that out of the way. We took a piece of plexiglass that I just had laying around. We actually riveted all of these clam crates to it. And the reason for that was that I didn't have to have a ton of holes in the floor. Because again, this is aluminum underneath here. We, excuse me, always want to make those holes to a minimum. So then we just have two big bolts that are holding this down. So I could take this out if I needed extra space or something happened to it or whatever. But this is nice because it's going to keep, you know, things like propane, maybe mineral buckets or whatever it is, rods and things. Whole place to keep buckets and, and not have them go all over the place. Then sometimes you really don't need fancy stuff. Like again here, this is held in place pretty good. You put an extra bungee or something there if necessary. But I've got my extra shafts for different size augers, uh, you know. Again, rather it's just even storage in the off season, but you know, you go on a trip, you want to have an extra, maybe you need a bigger one or a smaller one. Like I got my big uh, Strike Master right here. Another thing is that you can find these things online. 
and they're not the cheapest, but it's so much nicer. They're a lot lighter, you know, they're lifetime deals, these little bins, they hold everything. We got propane, just everything to get stuff off of the floor, whether it's because of water or rolling around or you're going down the road, it's a bad deal. Uh, another thing that I did was I, I ordered an extra cabinet. I measured everything out because I did order this trailer to specs, basically stripped down because I wanted to build it up like we show, uh, showed you in the videos there. But I want to have extra space. Cabinet space is always a good thing. We've got a light that I, I wired up both on top and bottom of the cabinet, which is really nice there. And then, you know, like this one here is my kind of close storage. Got all the stuff labeled because you got to have all these things with you when you go. You know, you're breaking something or doing whatever, whether it's pins, you got extra parts, first aid kit, all that good stuff. But keep those things organized. And one thing that I didn't figure out on my previous trailer was like all the space above the cabinet. So we kind of spaced these out so we could just get some of these utility boxes up here. And all I did was simply put a piece of angle. And these are extra strips from that floor that we showed you, the, the kick plate. We riveted those in. So these things can't come out going down the road. We've got just extra hats, gloves, everything's labeled up. Labeling's good, it's not just OCD. We've got all our Dakota lithium chargers, extra batteries and things like that. We've got an extra charger here. Something happens with the, one of the batteries in the vehicles or whatever it may be. Um, lots and lots of storage. Power is always a good thing. And you'll notice here, one of the things that we did kind of last minute is we installed an inverter for Dakota lithium there. So we can actually run stuff. If we had to charge something in the trailer overnight, even our graphs or something like that, that definitely can be done. And that's all run off of this big 280 dual plus deep cycle. That's the fancy Dakota lithium that's got the heater in it. Really nice deal. We have a Dakota lithium tray that we, we did through both that in several places to make sure that that doesn't go anywhere. And then I just simply up in the cabinet here, I've got a little jumper that I can hook on like gator clamps if I need to use that for something else. And one of those things that I have, and I keep this hooked up, is right here, I just clip those on, and we got, oh, well, here's the harness. That harness right there, because we've got a winch. So if you didn't see this deal, how we tie this in, I had this welded up and made. This is a really good deal because we have an anchor point. So in these trailers, you can't do anything to the wall. If you had to drag this, this snow machine in there or whatever it is, or even a car, there's no anchor point to do that without having something like this. So again, this can come out and we can put just about anything in that receiver. So another thing that I actually just had to use a few days ago is a floor jack and I keep one in my truck and I've also got one in the trailer, especially depending on where this may be located. And I found this nice little holder online, which is nice because those things take up a bunch of space and obviously at wheels and wanna roll around. Floor jack, I don't care unless you're 20, or you think you're a bit of a tough boy, you're gonna want one of those, and that's a nice way of keeping that you know, usable, but aside. Then some of the just little space we've got in there, we've got some blocks of wood and things like that, because as you guys know, sometimes the floor jack, you need that extra height with that, or ways of getting and blocking stuff up. Got us a little tool kit that's dedicated, stays right here. Just kind of wedging that in, and you gotta keep in mind, this is my off season, so we do store a bunch of extra just kind of stuff in here. And the fuel jugs, that's a big one. Um, these are my extras that go over to a different deal, but these are the four that we would carry with when we go. Again, you can see more trays. We've got an extra auger head. We've got some heaters in here, stuff like that. We've got extra oil for the snowmobile. It's still a little two stroker. And we've got a strike master little holder here for our auger and just little things. I put a buckle down there so the thing can't move, but the way we got our extra auger there that we travel with. And this was actually meant for like a bag of towels, I think. And I just riveted on a little strap, kind of a little homemade deal. So this is gonna hold up either my backup or my second or a borrow unit for like my hummingbird uh, well, live sonar. And then we've got our extra pole here. And again, just got a little ram mount and some old clamps and things like that that we kind of made just so it fits in there real good. Um, little things like that really go a long way. You wanna have all the stuff so you can see it. You know, we got our scoopers, our minnow nets, of course, another, another helmet holder there. Little things go a long way. So hopefully you enjoyed our uh, trailer build series. If you haven't seen the other five parts, make sure you go check those out. But to quote the old MTV Cribs, now you gotta get out. <laughs>